Well, hello, farming friends, and welcome back to another edition of Farming Simulator 2015 with me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose. Hey, today we are back on Hellshausen and uh, continuing on with our little soul mod excursion. And today we are going to be uh, working towards planting and doing a few other things. Um, so, first of all, to start this video off, if you watch uh, any of my last few videos about this, any of the discussions I've had on things I thought I knew about this little mod, toss them away. Uh, I did a lot of research over the weekend on this, and I actually came to find out that a lot of the information that I had, which was secondhand from people, is just total crud. Um, and uh, not really there. Uh, I really took the time to translate some documents over the weekend, watch some videos, really get a good idea on this, this uh, um, soul mod. And now I've got an actual idea about what I'm doing. I'm still a little bit in the weeds on a, a couple of numbers. Um, but I found some great documentation on mod hosters that really gives you um, the hardcore numbers and the growth stages because I can I assumed that your pH level let's say pH level I assume that every growth stage would affect your pH and apparently it doesn't it's only certain growth stages that affect it uh, the same with your herbicide or your same with your uh, your your fertilizer I assume that would go at certain stages for everything uh, PK is only affected in like two growth stages uh, whereas your you know where your nitrogen is on uh, each fertile each growth stage um, water of course is across the board but everything is affected by different numbers um, that I did not understand so um, Really, really was an education over the weekend on this. So I think I have a much better grasp at it. And um, so I'm looking forward to uh, really diving into it. Now I actually understand what my consumption numbers are per per usage. You know, you would think water is how many units of water consumed. Well, it's, you know, not really out there. It's uh, It's actually 14, I think, is the number of units that you get uh, when you spray a liquid but it's also 14 that you lose each day so and then you lose another 14 um, anytime that the weather is over a certain temperature so um, it having all that information really helps you be able to calculate uh, everything that's going to go on in your um, in your uh, in your day so with that in mind uh, I did go through the fields I uh, looked at everything and just kind of checked out all the different stages of where we're at nutrient wise and uh, for the most part uh, all my fields now have uh, 7.3 acidity um, so we're a little high 43 on moisture 15 for nitrogen which is really high and then our pk is in the gutter at one um, taking in consideration planting um, there's a lot of things that I learned that I didn't didn't understand. Uh, again, I had discussed the other day. I thought that this thing calculated every uh, 12 hours because I had saw that the at the top of the screen where it was going through the percentage soul mod percentage. Um, come to find out over the weekend, that's wrong. Um, the numbers that you see down in the bottom right hand corner are calculated. Uh, the pH, the nitrogen, the nutrients, the all of that, and the growth stage. The growth stage is calculated at midnight. So there's one calculation for the growth stage, unless you alter that uh, and make two growth stages a day. But the default is one growth stage per day. Um, and so I uh, I know that now. Uh, the calculation at noon is the moisture content in the field. That's what I didn't know. It looks at what the temperature for the day is. If it gets above 22C, it takes another 14% uh, percent of water out of your, uh, your soil moisture. So you have to look at your weather and note how many days during your growth 
uh, are you going to go over 22C and, and calculate for that and take those numbers into consideration? Uh, you have to take into consideration rain, according to what I've read. Every hour that it rains, it adds another 14% back into your soil. So if it does rain, you can end up with a very wet field. So um, with all that in mind and the numbers that I've gone through, I've kind of started to... Uh, work on a planting schedule for these fields. I'm a little leery of planting, but I'm going to go ahead and try it because uh, why am I leery? The weather. Uh, looking at the weather, it's supposed to rain on Sunday. Um, and I don't know how long that rain will last. It could last a couple of hours. Uh, it could last the entire day. Uh, I could wait for three days and then plant. And it looks like we have a clear weather schedule after that. But that means... There's three days the fields are sitting, you know, void. And uh, do I go mow grass for three days and do that? Or do we go ahead and do something and see what happens? Um, I'm going to go ahead and roll the dice and see what happens. Um, obviously, it's not going to kill all the fields if we get too much rain. We just won't get as good of a yield. But I'm not going to sit around and not do anything. Um, so looking at the numbers that I have right now and doing the calculations... Uh, we plant grain, and if we plant grain, and it's going to take us four days uh, to grow that, the growth stages that they go through, uh, we'll lose 0.2 on our PK. We'll lose 42% of our water during the growth of our uh, fruit. Uh, we'll lose four nitrogen, and we will lose uh, two PK. So um, weather-wise, there's three days in which... The temperature is going to uh, go above the um, 22C. So with that in mind, that's another 42% of our water we're going to lose in our field. Uh, herbicide, I need to put some herbicide down on the field um, at some point. We've got one day left, so I'm going to need to put a double dose of herbicide down to get us uh, a few days of weed prevention. Uh, when I do that, I'm going to lose 0.2 pK, and I'm going to gain 14% of water. And um, let's see what else. I'm going to uh, need to fertilize some pK into the field to get the pK up. So uh, right now, with it being, uh, we're going to be a negative one uh, by the at, at this point. So. Um, by putting a one application of dry PK down, um, I'll be able to uh, to bring it up three points, which will get us to uh, two. I'd like to possibly get it up to four or five, um, but at two, I'd be happy. Um, the reason I say dry PK is because if I if I do a wet fertilizer, I'm going to end up putting even more uh, water onto the field. And if it's going to rain, um, you know, that's not going to be good as it sets with the numbers I've calculated out. Um, water is my concern. It's going to be with the application of planting the weather and the herb herbicide, uh, put in that leaves me at negative 27% water uh, or a very dry field but that also is um, you know over the four or five day period for harvesting my concern is uh, how much rain we get if we get a ton of rain um, that's going to make a wet sloppy field but if we get maybe five six hours of rain that should get our moisture content to where it should be. So I'm going to roll the dice on it and go with that. So uh, what does all that mean for going forward? We've got to put some dry fertilizer on this field, um, which I can do a little bit later on. Or we can go ahead and sow the field now. Uh, so my game plan is, and the other thing I learned is you're not supposed to put herbicide and fertilizer at the same time. Uh, I was under the understanding that it would stack from some people, but uh, from the tutorial that I got, they don't stack. So keeping that in mind, my game plan is going to be to plant today. Uh, and, it, and when I say today, I mean uh, in game today. So uh, whatever today is, I think it is Friday, 
maybe. Uh, today is Friday. So on uh, it's 11 o'clock now. We're going to go ahead and get some grain planted. Uh, then we'll come back and do an application of dry fertilizer, which would be our our PK. Actually, I think I ought to put that down first and then plant because I've got drive control installed and I don't want to run over my, my stuff uh, right off the bat. So uh, we'll get some dry fertilizer in the field. Then we'll plant. Tomorrow we'll do an application of uh, herbicide. Uh, or when we get down to zero and we start to see some weeds, we'll apply our herbicide. And then it's going to rain on us and we'll just go from there. And uh, we'll see what happens after it rains. But uh, that should be that. Uh, with everything in consideration, uh, our soil should be around 6.8, 6 6.9 um, in pH. And that should be pretty good for us. So, uh, there it is. That's what I've picked up for it, and that's where we're going to go. Again, I'll put the uh, links to the video. To the There's one video worth watching, and then also the, um, the documentation that I found on Mod Hosters will help you guys out uh, quite a bit if you want to uh, watch that. So, um, that information is, is very useful. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, there's a couple of things I want to do today and it's going to start with the, uh, not with planting. I need to, uh, bust out the Merlot real quick and, um, get those bales straightened out because they're just irritating me sitting over there. I didn't do it off camera, so we'll do that real quick. Um, get those bells straightened out and then um, then we'll get to the fertilizer I'm gonna have to purchase a spreader uh, for dry fertilizer um, because I didn't think I was gonna need a dry fertilizer spreader but apparently I am going to so all right so let's see if we can get these bells straightened out and uh, Oh, come on, lock. There we go. So I just want to get these put in the uh, in the shed over here, and then we can uh, get going. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the videos over the weekend, uh, even though they're complete malarkey on some of it. Uh, just, God, I, you know, the more I read, the more I was like, it's like, why do I listen to anybody? Nobody's giving me the, the right information. And uh, I guess it's because they just didn't know um, what they were talking about. And much like I didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, but at least I admit I don't know what I'm talking about well, on some of that stuff. Um, so, anywho. Oops. Grabbed a bell there. This thing's moving like I was hitting something. I was like, why am I... Why am I going up and down? But then again, I have to remember I do have drive control in. And, uh, yeah. It's probably that ground reaction part of drive control that's doing it. So this won't take long at all. It's just a few minutes to uh, come in here and tap all this stuff and uh, get it moved over. Oh, lift that up there, buddy.
It's not going to be the neatest bale stacking. It's uh, it's going to do though. It will get the task done, right? And that's all that matters. Anyways. So I downloaded some, uh, go ahead and talk about a couple of things that happened this week. I downloaded a couple of new mod packs uh, over the weekend. Um, somebody, I guess, heard me mention about John Deere's um, and uh, sent me a link to a John Deere pack, and I appreciate it. Um, problem with a lot of these, these packages is they're not really packs of mods that somebody's done. They're packages where somebody's gone in and they downloaded a whole bunch of stuff uh, that they think is cool and then they've repackaged it um, for you to download so that you can get a collection of something or the collection that they think is is good and a lot of times it's junk um, and I hate to start sounding like other people who always say that about every mod you download but um, it, I have certain standards um, first of all if a mod doesn't get dirty unless it absolutely fulfills a need that I have uh, hence the John Deere 4730 I'm not going to download it if it's a uh, it's I'm not going to use it if it's a port over um, and it's a trash port over I'm not going to download it. Uh, it just doesn't do anything for me. Uh, or I'm not going to use it. Uh, you know, I'm going to check it out and uh, and see what I think of it. And if it just doesn't meet my standards, I'm not going to play it. Um, I'm looking for quality over just quantity. Um, and usefulness, you know. Is it is it something I can't live without? Uh, and is it something that makes sense to use, you know? Um, so I really look at the mod closely to figure that stuff out. I appreciate the effort that people put into it. Uh, but in the sense I got a John Deere pack sent to me that it just, you know, half of the mods in there didn't get dirty. They had dirty options. Like you could purchase a dirty version of it. Um, but every mod in there had an issue and pretty much, I mean, the thing about John Deere is, if I see a John Deere tractor come out, I pretty much download it and take a look at it. Uh, there's some of them I can just read the texting on it. Like, if they list all the functionality of the, the particular mod, but they never mention the word washable, you pretty much know it's not washable. Um, and washable is a big thing to me. I want it to get dirty and I want it to look realistic on the farm. And I don't want just the rims to get dirty. And you guys know, if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you know that um, the mod has to do certain things or I'm just not going to use it. And again, the 4730 is an exception to the rule because um, it's something that, you know, I wanted for this particular farm. You're not going to see it on any other farm. You're just going to see it on this one. Uh, and I wanted it for this particular farm simply for the fact that I was going to be doing the soul mod. Uh, and if I was going to have to be going through the fields continuously, I wanted the high boy. Um, so yeah, that's the the whole dealy do with that. But um, I was also sent a link though at the same time for a good fit pack. And uh, again, I... Mentioned in the video that I just hadn't had time to sit and go through all these Fent packages. Uh, there's been quite a bit of uh, Fent Varios come out and uh, 900 series and I hadn't had time to take a look at them. I did over the weekend and I am in love with this uh, Fent pack uh, that was linked to me, the Fent 900s. Uh, basically, it's a 900 Vario series. Um, and each one of them, uh, is a different horsepower. You've got the 924, which is 240 horsepower. 
927, 270 horsepower. 930 is 300 horsepower. The 933 is 330. And the 936 is uh, 936 horsepower. And this is 390 horsepower for the 939. Do you see the, you know, the logic behind that? Basically, the 39, the number after the 9 tells you the horsepower of it. Um, all of them are basically the exact same tractor. They just have the horsepower modified on them. The tractor itself is really nice. It runs smoothly, operates smoothly. Uh, it has limited IC on it, which again, IC doesn't matter anything to me. I tell you what's on it because uh, because I want you guys to know about it. Um, so the doors open on it. The rear hatch opens. Uh, the overhead hatch opens. That's about it for the IC on it. Um, nice tractor. Sounds good. Drives good. The only issue I found with it really um, was uh, in the in the amount of time that I spent with it. Um, the front fenders have a little glitch in them that as you turn the front wheels, they'll get to the point where the fender catches the, the tractor itself and then pops out of place. The wheel continues to turn, and, and just the wheel turns underneath the, uh, uh, the wheel kind of turns underneath the, the fender, so it pops out of place. So it's, um, that's kind of the only thing that I found on it, um, and I'll point that out when I buy one of them. I'm going to leave them in the game, though. I liked them. Um. I think they're good utility, and again, there's going to become a time when I replace everything with all Fent uh, and do a farm that is just Fent tractors, um, because I like Fent. I just I'm a Fent guy, so uh, that's just the the kind of thing I am. I like Fent tractors. Uh, I need to buy a um, a dry fertilizer spreader, um, and I think the one I'm going to end up getting is just the the in-game stock version of it. Um, so we just get this guy here, and uh, we'll have it to um, run through the. Field. Do we need that big one or just the uh, this one? Most of these fields are pretty small. I don't see a need to get the uh, the eighty two hundred. I think we'll be fine with the fifteen oh one. So we'll get it um, and have that. So we'll buy that now and come back. And I will have that shipped to the farm just because, well, I'm lazy today. And we're recording and I should have purchased this beforehand and just uh, had it moved over. But I, uh, yeah, didn't really think about it. So. All right, so there's that for us, and that will be our um, our little spread spread. So let's get that door open, and we'll get this door open as well. And we'll just run through and put some fertilizer on our fields. And we'll use this guy for it. Um... I found somebody commenting on Landy's page about using the Unimog for so much stuff, like mowing grass and things like that. Uh, they were saying it's a little unrealistic to use the Unimog for that. Have you seen what the Unimog can do? Have you looked in online and looked at some of the videos of the Unimog? It is the most... Look, I don't actually love the thing in-game... Um, but you look at what that thing does and what people use it for in the real world. And it is the most versatile, uh, utility vehicle you can get for a farm. I mean, in real life, they have, uh, backhoes on them. I've seen them set up with a backhoe, a box blade on the back of it, a, uh, a push blade on the front with the front end loader on it. I mean, it's just... The amount of utility they do with these things is crazy. Can you plow with it? Yep. Wait a minute. I can't do PK with this? Why am I not getting PK? Oh, come on. 
it said I could do dry PK. And all I'm getting is MPK. And I don't want MPK. I want dry. Ugh. Frustration. Okay. So. That might have to get sold off there, kids. Um, and for the time being, until I can get out and read on how to get... I mean, that's Lime. And the other one is in PK. And I don't want in PK. I want just PK. Alright, so that obviously isn't going to work. So for this video, we will not put the fertilizer out first. I'll just have to drive through the field and uh, deal with that. So let's get to sewing. Do something useful on this video other than just sit around and talk the whole time. Ho, 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 ho. Um, hello, uh, what sprayer can I use to do just PK fertilizer uh, as a dry form? I mean, goodness, I don't need any more nitrogen in the field. Um, I got plenty. Oh, is this going to do it to me again? There we go. Oh, I thought it was going to sit there. I don't know if I threw the video away where it did that to me before. I had one video where I had that uh, sewing machine parked in there. And for the better part of 30 minutes, I tried to hook up the trailer and could not. And it was a, a nightmare. So let's look at what we should plant here. We did sell off a bunch of corn, didn't we? So I think probably we need to put a little bit of corn in the field. We also need to put a little wheat or barley in so that we can get, um, so we can get ourselves, um, some more straw, uh, because we are going to use straw for both the bedding and the, uh, thing. So, uh, let's see, what do we got? Barley is really low. We've got plenty of wheat. So why don't we put some corn in the field and we'll put some barley in the field as well. And that'll get us started there. Um, yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. So, barley it will be as well as corn. So, with this one, I can't do... I forgot this uh, map has uh, multi-fruit on it. Oats and something rather else. What is that? Is that alfalfa as a uh, fertilizing crop? All right, so barley. I'm going to have to plant corn with that other sewing machine unless I go buy a bigger corn spreader. All right, so what don't we do... Let's do the big field in corn again and then just do the two smaller fields uh, in our... Um, in our barley. I think that'll be a good idea. So I'm going to, on this planting, I'm going to do things a little bit different this time. Uh, because it was uh, mentioned about the headlands and we talked about the headlands. So I decided this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant this whole thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do my rows first. I'm going to do my headlands after. Um and see how that turns out. So, uh, which means I got to get everything set up properly. All right. So let's get this guy turned on. Uh, working with, we know that needs to be drilled down. Uh, and I'm going to go 5.9 meters on that. I'm going to bring my field over just a little bit. That's really crooked. <laughs> really crooked. Get rid of the offset. I'm going to straighten that out. Come on. I wish there was some fine tuning on this when you're doing the adjustments. You know, where you can get it really, really accurate. Uh, but it just doesn't seem to have a, that touch. So... We'll just come over just a little bit, and that'll be good. And, um, 
maybe over just a little bit more because what I'll do is I can skip the uh, there we go all right so let's just run around in circles and uh, then we'll start our planting here all right so what I'm gonna do this time is instead of doing a headland first I'm going to just go ahead and set my seed down I probably ought to skip an outside row um, but we'll just go ahead and overseed the, the outside edge and so when I get to the end here I'm just gonna stop uh, pick up my head make my turn you know what I'm trying to think of how I want to do this and I think what I'll do is uh, do every other row and then come back catch a row So we'll get our field seeded today and uh, like I said I will come back and uh, once I've got um, this video done I'll jump online and see if I can figure out what sprayer I need to be able to do just PK in a dry form. Um, I know I can wet spray it, but again, the whole point is to, uh, try avoiding putting any more moisture, uh, into the field as I know it's going to rain. So if you're wondering why, if you didn't pick up on that, that's the reason why I'm trying to do a dry application of PK. I know I can do it wet. Uh, I have done it wet before, but, um... It's one of those situations where knowing that it's going to rain in a couple of days, I don't want to put any moisture into the field until I, and, you know, that I don't have to. And in all honesty, I probably shouldn't even plant right now. I probably should wait two days, let it rain, and then do the planting. But uh, we're going to risk it and uh, see what happens. So I'll end up just selling off that uh, that Amazon, and uh, since it doesn't do the PK fertilizer uh, like I wanted it to, and I don't need it for any other reason, I'll sell it off and uh, give myself the money back from it. Um, if we need it down the road, we can always purchase it again down the road, but it, uh, there's no need in doing it right now if we're not going to use it. Um, See, there's points in here where the moisture is 60%. Which I think that will all go down. That all may go down at noon. I don't know for sure. Again, this is a big learning experience for me. So y'all, uh, hopefully y'all are learning with me. I know, I know people like Bipolar Profit, uh, know all this. And, uh, um, some of you guys who have been doing this mod for a while know all this stuff. Um, I just am now really getting the hang of it, so... And it's good. like I said, it'll take me a couple of plantings to get all the numbers memorized and really know what I'm doing. But um, I'm getting a better hang of it. That whole the whole thing about you know only using PK for two growth cycles and um, using the 
you know, different things that it only does for certain cycles. That threw me off. I didn't didn't even have a clue about that. I assumed uh, you would use fertilizer on every cycle, and that you would use your uh, your PK equally as well. Uh, I didn't never dawn on me that um, the PK wouldn't be used, but except in the initial two growth stages. Alright, so I don't have to do this outside edge right now. I'm just going to come in here, make my turn, and um, run into the tree here. Come on. Come on, four-wheel drive. Do your thing. Pull that tree down. There we go. Alright, so we'll come back up through the rows that we skipped on that route down. And we'll get this field seated and then we'll come back we'll go around the perimeter of it one time. And, uh, yeah, we'll be good to go. So, probably spend another day on this map, and then i uh, probably take a break from it. Might take a break after today, um, just kind of getting tired of it. Um, I'm interested in all of this, and kind of want to, you know, that's the thing, is I, I sort of like to stay with a certain thing, or theme, if we're going along with it, like uh, in this instance the soul mod and working on it. I kind of like to stay with those kinds of things until it's completed. Uh, but at the same time, it's uh, it sort of gets boring after a while. And we kind of want to do something else. But... Kind of wanted to do some forestry. I need to get Mr. Recon and uh, do a little bit of forestry one day. So Landy and I were talking, I guess yesterday or the day before, and we were we were talking about the whole drive control thing, um, especially with the new um, fruit destruction that it put in, and um, theorizing on how much did, when does it actually destroy crop. Um, is it only after it, after its first growth stage? Or, let's say, right after, is it immediately after you seed? Because if you seed right now, is it going to, um, if I drive back over some seed, is that going to, in essence, compact it and, uh, and make it not grow in? curious on that one 
If anybody knows the absolute answer on it, that would be awesome. I guess the only way you would know is to seed the field and then go drive straight down the middle of it and uh, then let it grow and see what happens. I guess we'll see because uh, at this point I'm going to seed this field and then I'm going to come back through it with uh, a fertilizer. And um, so we'll see what happens with that. I'll, uh, I may end up making some tracks. Like I said, though, I do, I do like it. Um, definitely something that I I wanted in the game. I wanted tram lines. Um, had talked about it several times with friends, and um, and with the guys, and was like, you know, tram lines would be really cool. Um, Alright, so we're going to have to go around this a couple of times to, uh, to clean it up. And I probably should have gone inside laying out, but I'll just do it this way. So we'll get this cleaned up and planted and be ready to go. Get these little spots that got missed, and we should be good to go. And again, I don't worry about the corners of the fields because they're corners. I don't own a field that has a square corner. Just don't. And if I'm honest, this is something I would never do. I'd never go in and run back over headlands on our farm. We just, just again, ours is set up where we have enough room uh, coming out of the field to maneuver, so there's no need for it. Um, All right, so we'll move over here to this basin, and we'll uh, we'll put some barley in it. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to move this over just a little bit. <laughs> I gotta get in the right spot to do what I wanna do. If I pull right here, basically what I'm gonna give me is about three quarters of a width um, 
on the field. Wow, look how my off that is down at the end down there. If I can get that lined up better. It looks about right down there. So I'm just going to bring this over where it's about three quarters. And then I'm going to start on the second row. And that way I'm not seeding that area twice. Now I know a lot of guys when they seed their fields, they go, they start in the middle and they uh, work their way out. And I've seen that done quite a bit. And the way I'm skipping lanes like this, you'll see that a lot too. You'll see a lot of times, uh, just because of turning radiuses, people will skip lanes. So you do a row, skip a row. Sometimes you'll skip two. And it just depends on the, the cedar or implement that you're using at the time. Uh, you'll skip a couple of rows. So this episode is pretty much going to just be seeding the fields. And we'll get them done. Hope that's not too boring for you guys. Uh, early stages of farms, when I don't have much money, it's pretty much something I have to do. You know, is seed the field myself. Um, I don't know that that makes for a very entertaining video. But uh, it's something you have to do. That's the thing about it. I don't know if you guys just like to see each thing and and see, and see one thing in the video, or if you like multiple things. I try to mix it up and try to have a couple of things go on in each episode um you know like the unfortunately the last episode was nothing but cultivating and looks like this one's going to be well we did a little work with the merlot in the beginning and that's one of the things i wanted to do was to do that a little bit just to break the monotony up so the whole video wasn't me sitting in this thing um going that was sort of my game plan for the beginning uh, while we move those bales, there weren't very many bales to begin with, and uh, that way I could get you guys something other than just riding through the uh, JCB. But you know, I don't know if you guys if that matters to anybody or not. Most of the time, I try to do two, three things in a video uh, just to keep some sort of entertainment going. But then again, you get people who say do less course play work and do more, more of the stuff manually, you know. Um, so there's a fine line there that you have to do. Now, look, if I could do full automation with the GPS mod to where um, I could set one tractor up on GPS and then I could drive the other tractor on GPS. I'd do it in a heartbeat. Uh, and that way I could have like gang plowing. Uh, that would be awesome, but it just doesn't work. Follow me doesn't work. 
for plowing, which is where I would use a couple of different tractors. The rest of the stuff I do myself. Um, but plowing would be the one time that I would do me doing one thing and the AI doing something else. And I'd need for course play, not really the solution for that. Um, yeah. Alright, so swing around here like so. Grab this one. Alright, plow back across the field and then we'll do our headland and we'll move on. Who that cornfield's going to take for? ever with a three meter three meter oh, how much is a big corn seeder or, or a little one anyways 61,000 that might be a decent size for this particular farm because uh, I think six meters is really enough I don't think there's a need to go for the big horse uh, nine meter. Most of these fields are pretty small, so a six meter might be bad. So 61,000. I could probably sell off a little bit of grain and get that. Go mow a whole lot of grass. All right, so, uh, game plan for this week. Man, I need to think about it a little bit. Um, I'd like to do a couple of days on Colboro, get back onto it, uh, as we're starting to get that farm set up, which is more planting. Um, I would, l yeah, I need to mow grass on Colboro, uh, which I do want to do an episode with those uh, Moco mowers, and uh, just, uh, oh come on, I've got to remember to jump into the config and get rid of that button. How many times have I said that? A lot. It's so aggravating when I do that. Because then it does little things like when I cancel it, it shuts off the the seeder. So I drop the seeder, but I'm not seeding because it's not running. Anyways, I'd like to do a couple of days on Colboro this week. Uh, I just don't want it to be... I don't want every video this week to be planting a field. Um, so, again, maybe we mix it up a little bit. We jump on a coal burrow. Um, maybe we work on some baling. Uh, and, again, I don't... Uh, I haven't done any grass on that field. So, I need to cut some grass for just the sheep as well as... Uh, I need to cut and wrap some bales, and I did say I'd probably do some bale wrapping for you guys. So maybe uh, maybe that's what we do this week. Maybe we uh, bust out the MoCo on um, Colboro with mow grass there, come back, windrow it, and then um, bale and wrap some bales uh, on Colboro this week. And uh, then we spend a couple of days over on uh, Nor Brabant uh, doing some fruit tree work. I want to plant some fruit trees. We need to finish up getting all the silage out of there. Believe it or not, I've cleared out uh, over a million liters of silage. I think a million two is actually the front loader has processed. So... Um, we're actually to the point where we need to get into the bunk into the bunker uh, the long bunker and start cleaning it out um, but we'll almost have the Bermuda silage pit clean thank you oh somebody asked me in a in a comment 
if I thought maybe that was due to the patch. No, that thing's had bugs from day one. I mean, it's um, long before the patch, I've had issues with frame rates dropping out, um, running into things that don't exist. Like tra if you try to pull a trailer through there, um, it'll hang up on non-existent objects and uh, you'll, you'll just stop dead and can't go anywhere. So again, there's there's something in that area there that is not um, that is not really there, but supposed to be, and uh, just don't know what it is. Uh, so, and again, you look at the if you look at the wireframe on it, you can see. There's supposed to be stuff there, uh, but you just don't see any kind of graphical representation of it. So, all right, we'll come around to our headlands, and we should be good to go on this here stretch of uh, ground and I think I'm about going to wrap this video up I'll uh I'll see that cornfield off camera so you guys don't have to sit through that one. So it might make this video a little bit shorter. I think it's a little bit shorter. I think I started it uh, at 11 o'clock. Maybe a couple of minutes before 11. So uh, it's probably getting on up there into the one hour mark. But uh, it's not quite there. I missed quite a bit right there. So we're going to have to come back through there. Hope there's no traffic coming. Isn't this one of those maps that has no traffic on it, period? Like even if you have the traffic turned on, uh, you wouldn't get traffic? I believe it may be. Okay, there's going to be a hole right there. I'm not going to go back and get. All right. All right, boys and girls, guys and gals. I think I'm getting used to this uh, ground reaction uh, in course play. Not course play, but in uh, drive control. It's not nearly as annoying as it was. Um... might actually be able to live with it all right guys and gals we are back here at the farm um and that's going to do it for today uh like i said i'll do a little research on spreaders and see if i can figure out uh what spreader i need boy i just messed up I need to back this in, but it came in the wrong way, so. Oh, let's turn around one more time. Uh, but I'll figure out what I need. I'll sell off that one and then uh, get the proper one. And um, give myself the money back that I, I spent. And then... Um, and then I will uh, move forward. So the next video uh, might be Colboro. We might take a break from this. But we'll be back um, very soon. Probably We'll probably just try to get into a schedule of doing two days on this farm. Two days on that farm. Um, you know. And just go 
alter them out. Two days Colboro, two days uh, Nor Brabant, two days Holhosen for a little while. And then if anything else presents itself, we'll just mix it in. Um, but don't hold me to that. I don't really... We've talked about it uh, as a group uh, and discussed it. And I think the the whole thing of if there's something that we're doing that it makes sense to just do three or four days on um, because it's going to be uh, entertaining, I think that makes sense um, to do that. If it's... Uh, if it's just planting and such, we can always just do a couple of days and then move on to something else. But I'd always like my, my whole goal, if we're going to do that, is to have something going on different at every farm. So, like, we're not doing the exact same thing every day. Uh, and that's sort of where I'm at with Hull Hosen and, and Colboro is um all i got to do on those is plant for the most part and uh and i don't want to just do planting on here and go do planting on there um i'd like for it to be you know maybe you plant a couple of days on here and then you go over there and harvest a couple of days and then uh, you go do something on the other farm and then you come back here and you harvest, and then you go to plant on coal burrow, and you go do whatever somewhere else, and forestry somewhere, and so yeah, that's what we'll we'll strive to get to, anyways. So guys, that's gonna do it for today. Um, thanks for watching, as always. I do appreciate it. And uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. We're halfway to a thousand. I um, blown away this morning when I looked at it in picked up 40 new subscribers in just a couple of days so you guys are great thank you so much and welcome to the channel all the new subscribers uh, i do do a new video each and every day if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do so and that way you'll uh, know when the new videos come out and uh, as always i welcome your comments and uh, feedback and uh, input uh, or there's some uh, machines you guys want to see us play or whatever let me know um yeah, so we'll just move on forward. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you like the video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. It does help me out a whole lot. Until tomorrow, y'all stay safe. Have a great day, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.